Good morning, all. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we are happy to be here on this Wednesday morning. Today, we have Bryn Mawr College, and we have a student uh, in Dengelania who will tell us a little bit more about Bryn Mawr um, and what they have to offer. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to them. If you have any questions, feel free to use the chat box. Um, and thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, so hi everyone, um, I'm Jelania Morrow golden I'm an admissions counselor at Bryn Mawr College, and I'm joined by one of our tour guides. Emma, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, um, so my name's Emma. I am, I guess, a current senior. I just finished my junior year, so I'm in that summer space now. Um, I'm a biology major, and I'm originally from outside of Boston, Massachusetts. Awesome. And so we will both be facilitating this information session, um, just an overview of what we'll be going over. We'll talk about Bryn Mawr as a women's college. We'll talk about the liberal arts experience, some unique programs at Bryn Mawr, um, and then we'll end off with our consortium, which is our relationship with other colleges in the area and our proximity to Philadelphia. And we will have time at the end for questions, but if there are any questions throughout, we can take a couple pauses um, and answer questions throughout as well. So let's get started. Um, so Bryn Mawr College was founded during a time where women weren't allowed entrance into Ivy League institutions. And so Bryn Mawr, along with six other women, women's colleges were created, um, known as the Seven Sisters, in order to provide a rigorous education for women in a women-centered space um, where female empowerment um, and really finding your voice was at the center in, um, center of the education. And so Bryn Mawr is a place where women claim an education. This quote may seem simple, but it is powerful. Bryn Mawr students and alumni are bold, dynamic, and change agents in their communities. Often when we ask our students to reflect on their Bryn Mawr experience, many of them say that when they were sitting where you are sitting, um, they were not interested in Bryn Mawr because it's a women's college. Maybe they like the community or our rigorous academics, but after being here and experiencing this empowering environment, they say they would choose Bryn Mawr again because it is a women's, women's college, excuse me. <laughs> um, it can be hard to articulate this kind of experience, that sense of what it means to be learning and growing in a women's college community really grows while you're here. So I'm hoping over the next half hour, we can show you a snapshot of what that experience looks like. So Bryn Mawr is a community built on respect for the individual. Our students have the freedom and support to explore the things that are most important to them, but we do find that all martyrs do share some traits, an intense commitment to their academics, a purposeful vision for their lives, and a desire to make meaningful contributions to the world. Our students are critical, creative, and collaborative thinkers who solve real world problems. Um, our students are leaders because at women's colleges, women's leadership is not the exception, it is the norm. So every position of power and opportunity is available to women, from our self-government association, which is the oldest in the country, to research opportunities and internships, our students actively engage in problem solving and affect change. So before I share some work of our students and alums, uh, Emma, do you want to talk about your experience learning about um, a women's college and then attending a women's college? Yeah, um, so when I was uh, looking at colleges, when I was a, a junior and a senior in high school, um, my parents really thought I would love a women's college. They thought it would be a great space for me. I had gone to an all girls summer camp when I was a kid and um, that had been really great for me, but I was really on the fence about it. I um, didn't really know if that was a space that I wanted to be in. Um, but when I came to Bryn Mawr um, and I did an overnight at Bryn Mawr, my senior year, I really was able to see how strong of a community there was, how beautiful the campus is, just like all these other little things about the school that I really loved. And so I was like, you know what, this feels like a school that I really want to go to. This feels like a really great place. I'm not so sure about the women's college thing, but everything else really feels to fit. And so I feel like I should just apply here and go here if I get in. Like, this seems like the place that I should be. Um, and I'm really, really glad I made that decision um, because all of those things I felt when I was on that overnight are definitely true. There's this huge sense of community. Um, 
and there's um, academic rigor that I really appreciated, but not a ton of um, interpersonal competition, which is really nice. It's like a lot more chill of a space than my high school was um, and things like that. But the women's college thing has become something that I have really, really appreciated in my time here. Um, it's definitely something that has helped me grow and has helped me achieve things I didn't think I was ever going to achieve. I never thought I was going to be a STEM major. When I went to college, I didn't really see a lot of people like me in STEM, and I didn't really see um, a lot of paths that I could go down in that um, kind of field. And when I got here, I took intro bio um, on urging of one of my advisors and very quickly figured out that this was a exactly where I should be and just kind of had that support because it was a women's college in a way that I, I don't know if I would have found um, at a different institution. So it's definitely been really important to me um, and kind of the way that I view the community. Thank you. That was great. Um, and then next I'll just share a, a couple of other students who are doing some great things. Um, so this is Olivia from the class of 2018. And as a Mellon Mays Fellow, Olivia received funding to conduct original research on marginalized groups in the modern art trade, which brought together all their interests, art history, museum studies, and Africana studies. The aim of the Mellon Mays Fellowship is to support scholars of color who wish to earn a PhD in inter-academia. Next, we have Joy, an international studies major and Africana studies minor. The summer after her first year, Joy won a Davis Project for Peace Award to provide high school girls in her home country of Zimbabwe with greater access to education. Joy's program included elements of mentorship, entrepreneurship, and education to help girls stay in school. She hopes to continue to expand this work. She currently works for a financial planning and investment firm in New York City. And then we have Haley, a math and chemistry double major, just graduated in 2019 and was awarded a Fulbright Research Fellowship to study metalloenzymes in Germany. Haley was able to get firsthand research experience throughout her time at Bryn Mawr, including attending a conference where she met her now advisor. Haley was also a student athlete and a master's student through Bryn Mawr's combined degree program. So as you can see, um, we are very proud of our students and all that they have and will accomplish. We're proud to be a women's college that educates smart, strong women who leave campus to become global leaders and lifelong learners. And just some quick facts, at Bryn Mawr, two and a half times the national average of degrees are awarded to women in STEM. 100% of students complete a senior thesis or capstone and 97% have a positive career outcome one year after graduation. So as Rachel from the class of 2016 says, it's cool to be smart here. Our students are excited by challenging, by the challenging and engaging coursework and research, strong bonds with faculty, students, and alum, innovative programs that connect study with action, and top-tier partnerships that expand options we have here at Bryn Mawr. And so next, I'll talk about our liberal arts experience. So Bryn Mawr is very interdisciplinary in that we really want students to have a breadth and a depth of knowledge, um, not only being experts in their fields, but also um, being, being well-rounded in other disciplines and taking other classes in other areas as well. And so while students are encouraged to explore their interests and passions, our core curriculum takes um, an innovative approach to engaging students in a variety of ways. Um, we don't have requirements like math 101 or English 102. Instead, we have our approaches to inquiry, which helps students develop vital and transferable skills that prepare them to live in a global and diverse community. So students often find a major, a minor, or even a career interest through taking a course to meet a requirement which is why we don't um, let students declare their major until the end of their sophomore year. So this allows them to take those courses in areas of interest or areas that they might want to major in, but then they may figure out that they don't really want to major in it. So it really allows them to explore a little bit before they um, make that final decision. And so we have our approaches to inquiry. I'll read them quickly. Critical interpretation, cross-cultural analysis, inquiry into the past, and scientific investigation. They sound a lot more intimidating 
intimidating than they actually are, and there are a lot of ways to fulfill them. Um, so inquiry into the past could be a traditional history course, or you could take an anthropology course or a sociology course. We really want to know that you're gaining those transferable skills. Um, and so if it's in a department or a class that's of interest to you, that's an added bonus. Um, Emma, do you want to talk about some of the ways that you were able to fulfill your approaches to inquiry? Yeah, um, so actually one of the reasons that I ended up taking a biology class my freshman year um, was because when I started at Bryn Mawr, I thought I was going to be a history major, and when I showed my tentative schedule to my dean, who, who was an advisor that you're assigned um, over the summer before your freshman year, um, he looked at it, he was like, this is going to be a really heavy reading and writing schedule. This is going to be maybe a little stressful for your first semester of college. Why don't you find something that's a little bit different, that's going to fill one of your approaches to inquiry, kind of get one of those out of the way and just diversify your schedule a little bit. And that's how I ended up in intro bio and totally fell in love with it, switched my major within the semester and was like totally on board to be um, a bio major. It was like head over heels, definitely what I wanted to be doing. Um, so I'm really glad that like I kind of just had that nudge. Um, to do that, but other classes that I've used, um, I used an education class for cross-cultural, um, for my cross-cultural analysis class that was really talking about um, the different ways that um, the diverse American culture kind of interact with education and understanding how the education system is maybe geared towards certain groups of people in the United States and not towards others and how we can really work to help make um, education systems in the United States more inclusive, which was really, really interesting. Um, the class that I actually used for my uh, inquiry into the past was a biology class that was about um, uh, the history of genetics and embryology. And so it really took two fields that I really love and kind of brought them together, but it also took students from multiple different departments on campus and brought them together as well. Um, so it was really cool because I would sit down with a reading and I would have all this modern scientific kind of knowledge to bring to it and was like really excited about kind of talking about where that paper from the 1900s went um, in future day and there'd be a history major who would sit down and would say, well, this is the historical context. And so it was just really cool to be able to to come in thinking that I knew everything that I could possibly know about the reading and then realize that this other perspective totally was needed to understand it. Um, and it really helped me broaden the way that I think about science. Um, and so I really appreciated kind of having that opportunity to take a class that's technically a history class, but was also very, very scientific, um, which was really cool. So yeah. Yeah. And then in addition to our approaches to inquiry, we also have um, a language and a math requirement. And with our language and math requirement, we have a test up policy, not a test out policy. So if you have like any AP credit or anything that you wanted to get credit for, you can <coughs> test up into a more rigorous math or language course, but you can't test out. And then in addition to those, we also have something called our, uh, called our Emily Balk Seminar, um, which is in honor of an alum from Bryn Mawr who won the Nobel Peace Prize for Literature. And it's just an introduction into college level writing. And there are also a vast number of ways to fulfill this course as well. Um, but students are able to really get connected with their peers in the Bryn Mawr community. You have to go to your professor's office hours um, and go to the writing center. Um, and you really are able to hone in on your writing skills through this course. Emma, do you want to talk about your eSIMs as students yeah. call them? Um, so my eSIM was called Sound of Numbers. I'm pretty English class afraid. Um, I'm not uh, a super English classy kind of person. Um, so I was really excited that the writing requirement could be something that focused on something a little bit different than just straightforward English class. Um, so my class uh, was about music and numbers and kind of the physics of how music and math relate to each other and um, just kind of talking about poetry and, and the, the musical aspects of poetry and the, the math aspects of poetry. Um, and it was really different than any other way that I'd ever talked about music or English um, and readings and things like that. Um, but at the same time that I was doing all of this, you know, I was learning how to use the library. I was learning how to write papers. I was meeting with my professor and kind of talking with her on a pretty regular basis. It was the first time I'd ever called a teacher by her first name, Amy, instead of um, her last name. And, and that was really an introduction to how close you become with the professors at Bryn and it really helped me to be able to kind of see like how accessible professors were and how much they wanted to help you um, and how willing they were to meet with you if you just, you know, put in the little bit of effort that it takes to set up a meeting. Um, they really do want 
um, to talk to you and, and to help you, um, which was really great to kind of have that your first semester. And then once you start taking harder classes in the future years of college, like having that base level and kind of saying like, okay, I'm struggling. It's time to go talk to a professor and like, I know how to do it. Um, so it was definitely really helpful. Thanks. Um, and then also another great benefit of just the liberal arts experience in general is that students benefit from small class sizes. So our class sizes range from about nine to 12 and they can become smaller as you get into more um, higher level major courses or they can become a little bit larger about 25 to 50 if um, you're in an intro course like our introductory biology or psychology courses tend to be a little bit larger um, but students really do get to benefit from a small class size and again it really connects you with your peers and professors um, and they can lead to research opportunities or internship opportunities um, but that's also an added benefit of the liberal arts experience and so next I'll talk about some unique programs but I just want to take a quick pause just in case there are any questions about the um, Bryn Mawr, about Bryn Mawr as a women's college or our liberal arts experience that we talked about. Okay, and then we can get going and if any questions do pop up, we'll keep an eye out and we'll answer them. Um, so next. Um, at Bryn Mawr, students um, actualize their learning beyond the classroom through multidisciplinary learning opportunities, such as our Praxis program, our week-long intensives, studying abroad, and our very popular 360 program. So as part of um, the 360, for instance, um, I'll talk about the, our 360 program first. It's basically a cluster of courses, two to three, depending on um, the semester and what the topic is. But as you can see on the screen, the Migrations and Borderlands 360 use the lenses of cultural studies and sociology to critically and comparatively examine migration in different national contexts and historical moments. Um, so you would be studying one topic from multiple perspectives, um, or multiple uh, subjects or disciplines, excuse me. Um, and then there's also an experiential component. So as part of their 360, this group of students traveled to the US Mexican border to engage with artists and activists. And depending on the topic, you could be engaging with politicians and scientists and activists and artists and people on the ground really living this experience that you've been talking about all semester. Um, so you really get to have hands-on experience and um, hands-on perspective on what you've been talking about in the in the classroom and connecting that theoretical knowledge to that practical knowledge and seeing how it plays out in person. Um, in addition to our 360, we also have study abroad. So first I'll talk about our traditional study abroad, which is during our fall and spring semesters. Typically students at Bryn Mawr study abroad their, the first semester of their junior year. You can study abroad whenever you'd like, but typically students do just because of traditions and other activities that happen on campus. Um, that's the best time to study abroad. But we have over 95 pre-approved study abroad opportunities over all livable continents, except for Antarctica. But I like to say that if you wanted to go to Antarctica, you could probably find a program for it. Um, when you decide to study abroad, you get a study abroad advisor and they help you with the whole process of figuring out um, what classes you'll take, where you'll be staying, if you need a visa, um, credits, all of that, just to make the process as seamless as possible um, with the least stress to you. <laughs> um, and also another great thing about studying abroad at Bryn Mawr is that your financial aid package travels with you. So you get to study abroad at no additional cost. Um, and we do this because we wouldn't want a student to be unable to study abroad because of financial um, reasons. And so um, that's our traditional study abroad. If you wanted a shorter term study abroad opportunity, you could also study abroad during our fall or spring break or summers. And we have special Bryn Mawr funding to help um, also pay for those opportunities as well. But students can take advantage of all of the experiential um, learning opportunities that we have. Emma, do you want to talk about um, anything that you've been able to be a part of in your yeah. experience? Um, so I actually want to talk about Praxis, which is um, kind of the component of that that wasn't really talked about yet, um, which is classes that have some kind of component outside of the classroom in like the local Bryn Mawr or Philadelphia area. Um, so I was able to take some education classes that placed me as a TA in local schools in the area. 
um, which was really cool for a lot of reasons. Um, when I started at Bryn Mawr, I really thought I wanted to be a teacher. A lot of these experiences, even though they were really amazing, helped me figure out that probably wasn't the right path for me, um, which was just super helpful. But it was also just really cool to be able to see classrooms that were really different than the classrooms that I had grown up um, being a part of um, and just seeing a, a wide variety of them um, and just working in different communities and really getting an idea of what the community around Bryn Mawr was really like. Um, and so the one that uh, really helped me the most was a um, middle school classroom um, at a local middle school, just about a 15 minute train ride away. Um, and the school would pay for my transportation and I'd um, actually got a ride from my teacher there um, because the train schedule didn't quite fit up and she really wanted me to be able to make it. So she would drive me there and drop me off and then I'd take the train back. Um, and I was working with a seventh and eighth grade math class. And a lot of the students in the class were international students um, who were ESL and the school just didn't really have any system to support them. And so it was really interesting to have this moment where um, I and the teacher were really um, working together to try to figure out how to help them with very few resources. Um, and it was just an experience that I don't think I would have been able to have in any other context and just really helped me figure out things that I was good at and figure out things that were really challenging uh, and just kind of work through them. So it was, it was a really cool experience for me. Yeah, thank you. Um, and there are also other learning opportunities like that, um, that Emma spoke about. So you can also do shadowing opportunities. If um, there's like a career interest that you have, I know students who have shadowed doctors in the Philadelphia area or lawyers um, and found out that that's really not the lifestyle <laughs> that they wanted to lead. Um, and so uh, the earlier on you take advantage of these opportunities at Bryn Mawr, you can really find your space and your passion um, and have the greatest experience at college that you can. Um, and so next I'll talk about our consortium, which is our relationship with other colleges in the area. And I'll talk about our proximity to Philadelphia. So some other internship and research opportunities. And so student learning and engagement goes beyond Bryn Mawr's campus. Um, we are a part of an active consortium with Haverford College, Swarthmore College, and the University of Pennsylvania, which expands students' academic, professional, and social opportunities. 77% of Bryn Mawr students will complete at least one internship in Philadelphia or beyond. Our Career and Civic Engagement Center, which I think is amazing and it's a great resource for students to take advantage of, um, has $750,000 available in summer funding for students. And we have 20 combined degree programs, most of which students like Haley mentioned earlier in the information session, um, allows them to earn their undergraduate and graduate degrees in a shorter amount of time. And then we also offer more than 90, 95 pre-approved um, study abroad programs in addition to summer abroad and 360 degree, de degree experiences. Um, and so I'll talk about um, our consortium. So first I'll talk about Haverford College, which is our closest relationship. It's about a mile from Bryn Mawr um, and students are able to uh, major, minor, do everything at Haverford that you're able to do at Bryn Mawr. Um, and we have something called the Blue Bus that takes students to and from um, both colleges and it runs on the class schedule. So you'll never be late for class unless you get on at the wrong time. Um, <laughs> but again, students are able to um, be involved academically and Haverford students and professors um, are very welcoming of Bryn Mawr students and you're able to um, be involved in clubs and activities um, and extracurriculars as well. And Swarthmore College is our next relationship um, which is about 25 minutes away from Bryn Mawr. And so we have something called the SWAT van that comes and it takes students to and from Bryn Mawr as well, runs also on the class schedule. And students, just because Swarthmore is a little bit further, we have um, more specific majors and classes that students are able to take there. So we have tri-college majors like our linguistics or Arabic majors um, that students would have to take courses at Bryn Mawr. Um, Haverford and Swarthmore in order to fulfill the major. And so that would be a reason that you're going to Swarthmore a little bit more often than your um, peers. But you can also be involved in extracurriculars and clubs and um, social activities on Swarthmore's campus as well. And then our last relationship is with the University of Pennsylvania and they are right in Center City, Philadelphia, and they are also accessible through train. So we have a train stop about a block and a half from Bryn Mawr and it'll take you right to um, the University of Pennsylvania. 
And again, just because the University of Pennsylvania is a little bit further, um, students have more limited courses that they're able to take there. But a lot of students actually take their language requirement at the University of Pennsylvania um, because they offer an array of languages and um, some more specific dialects that students are able to take advantage of. Um, Emma, do you want to talk about your experience with the consortium, whether it's um, academic or social? Yeah, um, so my relationship with the consortium is significantly more um, social than it's been academic. I've definitely taken classes at Haverford, um, but just because I really love the bio department at Bryn Mawr, I spend a lot of my major classes just on campus. Um, and so a lot of the times when I venture to Haverford, it's extracurricular classes. Um, I took an art class there this semester. So I was at Haverford for about half the semester um, before we came home for, for this crazy event. Um, that I also took my language at Haverford, so I actually took um, intro Arabic my freshman year and that was at Haverford. Um, but the majority of my experience working um, kind of with the consortium has been very social, just through my classes that I've taken both on other campuses and on Bryn Mawr's campus, just meeting students who are also from those schools taking classes at Bryn Mawr. Um, I've built a really large friend group that kind of spans across Bryn Mawr and Haverford. Um, and so I spend a lot of time kind of bouncing back and forth between those two campuses over the weekends, um, hanging out um, with my friends kind of in either space. Um, one of my really good friends is the <clears throat> sorry, is the captain of the uh, Bi College Ultimate Frisbee team. And so I go to a lot of her games um, and kind of see those kind of experiences that are very um, Bi College um, in nature. So Bryn Mawr and Haverford. Um, and I personally um, haven't spent a ton of time at Swarthmore, um, but I definitely have friends who are linguistics majors who spend a good chunk of their day there. Um, and so I definitely um, have had like a, an experience kind of with Swarthmore, even though it's not something that I necessarily um, utilize as much as I think some other students do as well. Um, and then University of Pennsylvania has been really great for me because it kind of gives me a hub in the city that I can explore out from. So I know UPenn's campus, it's a space that I feel safe being on because it's another college campus. I know a couple people who go there. Um, you know, it's a space that like Bryn Mawr is like helping me get used to. And then from there, I can kind of explore outwards and get to know the city. So that's been a really cool way to kind of explore the city while still feeling like there's this other space to, to come back to that you're like, okay, I know where I am, <laughs> I'm not lost, um, which just feels really good. Thank you. Um, and then I'll talk about our proximity to Philadelphia. So Bryn Mawr, like Emma was saying, um, is a great space that um, you have a college that's very close to a major city. And so students are able to explore Philadelphia academically and socially. So I'll talk about um, academics, but our, through our Career and Civic Engagement Center, students can take advantage of um, those shadowing opportunities. They can take advantage of research research and internship opportunities. So you can go to the Career and Civic Engagement Center and tell them you'd like to do an internship or a research opportunity, maybe in the Philadelphia area with whatever interest in education, whatever field you're interested in, and they will help match you. Um, and we have Bryn Mawr funding. So if you do um, decide to do an internship or research, you can get funding for transportation to and from um, Bryn Mawr, which I think is a, a great resource too for students to be able to take advantage of. Um, and so that's a, a great resource that you are able to take full advantage of um, the Philadelphia area as well. And we also have a lot of alum who are still in the Philadelphia area. So it's a great uh, networking opportunity for students to take advantage of. Um, you can speak with an alum who's in your field of interest or um, a, an interest, a field that you're interested in pursuing, um, and they can give you some more insight um, into how their lives are, or, you know, um, what their experience has been like, and that's also something to take advantage of. Um, but yeah, and then also socially, Philadelphia has a lot of art and culture and music um, and just a lot to take advantage of. Lots of cool museums and uh, music festivals and concerts that come through. Um, it's a great food place. There are a lot of really good restaurants. Um, and there's something called Restaurant Week, which I actually learned about very late. <laughs> um, but <laughs> there's something called Restaurant Week and um, nice fancy restaurants that are are maybe not affordable on a college budget. Um, they actually reduce their menu. Um, so you get a smaller dinner portion um, for a cheaper price and students are able to take advantage of that during restaurant week. And so I think that's also cool too. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of different ways to explore Philadelphia, both academically and socially. 
Emma, did you want to add anything about that, about the proximity? Um, to Philly? Yeah, so Bryn Mawr also um, organizes a bunch of events that go to Philly. So um, there's like the Philadelphia Flower Show is like a big thing in Philly and Bryn Mawr organizes a bus um, and volunteers to go work it. So you can um, go for free if you volunteer to work it um, or you can go for a very reduced price if you go through Bryn Mawr. Um, they also have um, an ice skating rink that's set up um, on the river every year and Bryn Mawr will take students for, again, a reduced price. Um, or if you need financial aid for it, the residential life covers it too. Um, but it's like five bucks, 10 bucks kind of thing um, to go ice skating at like midnight. So it's like super fun <laughs> um, and you're like out until 2 a.m. And it's just like a really great way to hang out with your friends and see the city. Um, so they do a bunch of things like that with the city, which is always a really great way to get like a cheap night um, hanging out in Philly. Um, and then I saw that there was a question about transportation. Um, so I also just wanted to mention there are like two train lines into Philly. Um, if it's for academic purposes, Bryn Mawr will cover um, the cost of that. One of them is much closer, but it takes a little bit longer and it's a little more expensive. And one of them is like a slightly longer walk, but you pass the Wawa on the way. So it's really not that bad, <laughs> um, which is just this local convenience store that everyone's really obsessed with in the Philly area. Um, and it's a little bit faster and a little bit cheaper. Um, and then between the schools, um, between Haverford and Bryn Mawr, there's a bus. Between Swarthmore and Bryn Mawr and Haverford, there's a van. And then on the weekends, the bus between Bryn Mawr and Haverford also brings you to a local town that just has, you know, the Apple store if you need to fix your phone. It's got Trader Joe's if you want some snacks, clothes stores, smoothie shops, ice cream places, stuff like that. So kind of gets you around. Awesome. Um... And then um, just one of my favorite quotes from a recent alum to end off, um, Bryn Mawr is a place where you can come as you are and grow into whatever you want to be. So Bryn Mawr is a place where students pursue their passions for lives of purpose. And I hope you got to see a little glimmer of that during your visit today. So we will be taking questions now um, if anyone has questions. But thank you so much for joining us. Um, so one question, are there any rules or policies that apply to Bryn Mawr students because it's a women's college? Um, there's not any rules. I mean, we have our self-government association, which I can mention, and then Emma, if you would like to add on. Um, and students are really able to um, take accountability and responsibility for actions uh, that happen on the campus, on the on Bryn Mawr's campus. Um, so through our self-government association, um, those are like some rules and policies, but it's, I feel like it's an uh, unsaid rule that students just really um, respect one another and hold each other accountable. Yeah, I think also just in terms of it being a women's college, um, there are like some kind of guidelines for who applies and stuff like that, but the campus is um, a little bit more diverse than just being straightforward all women. Um, there is a trans community on campus as well, so there are non-binary students, um, there are people who use he him pronouns, there are also just people coming and going from other campuses, so there definitely is also some gender diversity just kind of on campus, just to hit on that. Um, but then yeah, it's really like the honor code, the social honor code, stuff like that, um, but um, that's all student written and, and student directed. So anytime there's something in that that you maybe don't agree with, you can get together with your friends, write up a resolution and present it at something that we have called plenary, um, where students just vote on a bunch of student resolutions. And so it's a really great way to be able to just directly change the environment that you're in um, for the better, which is really cool. Thanks. Um, and then another question is on campus housing guaranteed for all four years. Um, Emma, do you want to talk about housing? Um, um, so it is guaranteed um, for, for students for all four years and the majority of students live on campus all four years. Um, there are definitely some seniors and juniors who choose to live off campus. Um, it's definitely grown a little bit more popular actually in my time at Bryn Mawr, but it's still um, a huge minority. Most people live on campus all four years. Um, and the dorms are all really, really pretty. They're all really individual. They're all really different. Um, right now, actually, on our Instagram, um, on Bremer College Admissions Instagram, there's like a story about um, dorms. And so you can kind of click through that to see some of the different spaces. Um, but it's just really, really nice. Um, 
because all of your rooms have like kind of their own character. Um, and juniors and seniors are guaranteed singles, which is a huge perk. Um, and about half of the sophomore class gets singles. So once you become an upperclassman, you can really have your own space in that way. And then first years, we do have um, first years in doubles, triples, or quads, but that really becomes a community-based thing. Um, you become, you have at least one person um, from day one that you can go and get food with, um, which is really important. So um, that definitely, I think, is really helpful. And then within our dorms, we also have something called the dorm leadership team, which is a group of students who really just help first years and all students just kind of be a part of the dorm community, which I think also is super, super important um, to the first year experience and just general Bryn Mawr experience. Yes. Um, and then another question is, what makes Bryn Mawr stand out from surrounding and consortium schools? Um, so from a staff perspective, um, definitely I think that academics um, and just the type of students that Bryn Mawr usually attracts, um, very ambitious, outgoing, well outspoken, um, women-centered uh, people and um, hardworking. And, but also Bryn Mawr, through our consortium, um, students are able to engage in the other um, schools as well. So it's like you have Bryn Mawr as your home base, but then you're able to explore the other campuses. And I think that that's something that's a little bit different than the other campuses are, um, having Bryn Mawr as your home base, um, which is a, a women-centered space, and then being able to venture onto these co-ed um, colleges um, and also experiencing them in a, a different way. Um, Emma, I don't know if you want to yeah. give a student's perspective. Um, I also think the traditions are something that make Bryn Mawr really unique. We have a really, really close sense of community at Bryn Mawr because we have these four major traditions that happen throughout the course of the year um, that are really just about uniting the students and, and making this, this big community where we all feel um, really comfortable and, and happy on campus. And I think um, that that sense of like Bryn Mawr identity, I think makes us pretty different from the other schools in the, the surrounding area. Um, and just, again, kind of highlights the idea that like Bryn Mawr is your home and your, your, your home base. And then from there, you're kind of radiating outwards. Um, and I think that just really helps um, kind of make me really love Bryn Mawr because it is just kind of that space where I have all these people that really matter to me. Um, yeah. Any tips on how students can stand out when working on their application? Um, great question. So I like to say, utilize your personal statement. So your transcript is kind of already set in stone from all the grades that you were able to do and extracurriculars, but your personal statement is a great space for us to really get to know more about you and learn more about you um, other than what your grades are and what you've been involved in, in high school. Um, and so really take that as an opportunity to um, share out uh, who you are and why Bryn Mawr is a great fit for you. Um, and then also your um, recommendations. Um, really pick recommenders who can speak to your personality and your um, academic traits and really how they think you will succeed or um, um, just speak highly of you. Um, so those are two things that I think um, really stand out in an application. And then I did want to touch a little bit on um, some resources that Bryn Mawr has. So I wanted to talk about our Pinsby Center, which is our diversity and inclusion center. Um, and they offer a lot of events throughout the semester in the year as well for students of color, um, students from different religious backgrounds, students from um, different sexual orientations. Um, and so they can also be a great resource for students um, to take advantage of as well. And then we also have something called our Enid Cook Center, which is a living space Space, but also um, a, a social space for students of the African and Latinx diaspora to um, live there, but also to um, congregate and um, enjoy um, activities. And um, there are events throughout the year for them as well. And so that can be a great resource for students to take advantage of too. And then we also have lots of affinity groups um, for students to uh, be a part of as well. So those are just some resources that I did want to touch on um, that I forgot to mention. And then I think we have another question. Um, how has Bryn Mawr su supported students through the pandemic? Um, so, Emma, do you want to talk about um, how you felt supported and then I can talk about some things that we've done as staff members? 
Yeah. Um, so Bryn Mawr was actually on spring break um, when it kind of got to the, the point where colleges were deciding to close. Um, so when I went home for spring break, no college had closed yet. It wasn't even something any of us were thinking about when we went home. Um, and by Wednesday of spring break, it was pretty clear that um, Bryn Mawr needed to, to close. So um, we had a slightly different experience because the majority of students were already at home, which I think for a lot of us made the transition slightly easier. Um, we already had some of our stuff. Um, there wasn't like the crazy scramble of, of all of us kind of leaving campus in the same way that I think a lot of other schools were struggling. Um, Bryn Mawr uh, was pretty transparent in the beginning, um, was good about kind of letting us know how to um, ask to stay on campus um, and kind of uh, made sure that students who needed to be on campus um, for health reasons and things like that were able to remain on campus, especially if someone had like a family member at home who was um, high risk, like not flying home, um, making sure that those students could could stay on campus. Um, and then academically, we um, changed our grading policy. So um, any student can make a class, what we call credit, no credit, which is kind of like pass fail. Um, after we get our grades back. So we're gonna get our grades sometime next week and then we have about a week to um, make the decision if we want to leave them uncovered and just have a, a grade for that or if we're like, you know what, this wasn't my best semester, it wasn't my greatest grade, I'm just gonna hide it and say I passed and, and that's gonna be enough um, for the semester. So um, that's been really helpful and is, has definitely reduced the stress. And then um, it's really been um, very, um, dependent on, on professors just because classes at Bryn Mawr are so different um, and so having like one rule for how all classes are run just wouldn't really work well because I have a lot of lectures and labs and a bunch of my friends have you know discussion circles and, and things like that and the, those kinds of classes all have to kind of work in their own ways um, but professors have all been really really accommodating we had tons of office hours um, online um, a lot of professors did pre-recorded lectures so if you had trouble with Wi-Fi or time differences, you know, you didn't have to wake up at 1 a.m. in the morning if you're living in China to, to log on to your 1 p.m. class and, and really just kind of having that understanding um, has been really amazing. I felt really supported by, um, by, a, by a lot of my professors um, during the time and, and a lot of professors I didn't even have this semester were reaching out and just being like, hey, just wanted to check in. Um, how have you been doing? What's, what's life been like? Where are you? Are you safe? Is your family safe? Um, which I really, really appreciated um, and really needed, so. Yeah, I actually think you covered it all. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. Um, and then another question is, how supportive is your school's financial aid to DACA undocumented and international students? So I do want to say that I am not a financial aid advisor, so um, I can't give you specific um, financial aid information. Um, you can speak with a financial aid advisor, but I can tell you from an admissions point of view, we view DACA undocumented and international students the same way that we do domestic students. So um, we review the application in the same way um, from a holistic manner. So you would have to speak with a financial aid advisor to get more financial uh, information. And then another question is, why is Bryn Mawr a good choice for a student from Durham, North Carolina? Um, so I would say I, why, what I mentioned earlier, Bryn Mawr is a great um, space for students to really get a rigorous education. Um, again, our history of being a women's college um, during a time where women weren't allowed into uh, Ivy League institutions um, is a part of our history. And so we have that rigorous education that students are able to take advantage of, plus our consortium and our, our networking and um, educational opportunities outside of Bryn Mawr through our consortium in the Philadelphia area. Um, but also, um, it's close to a major city. Um, Emma, I don't know if you want to expand on why you think Bryn Mawr is a good choice. Um, yeah, I mean, I think for me, the thing that was really great about um, my, my first year at Bryn Mawr was that um, there's really this idea of um, trying as hard as you can to um, have everyone be on the same playing field. So with something like the ESAM, with something like the dorm leadership team, um, with the advisors you're assigned pretty much right away the second you get on campus, having students from a bunch of different backgrounds and a bunch of different um, academic pasts and, and social pasts, um, really getting the experience to um, 
kind of get to the same place as everyone else. Um, so no matter if you wrote, you know, 10 page, 15 page research papers in high school, or if papers weren't a really big part of your high school experience, you're learning how to write a paper at college. And whether or not you were homeschooled or went to a high school that had three times the number of students as Bryn Mawr, you're figuring out how to make friends on your dorm and, and kind of get to know Bryn Mawr students. And I think that um, really makes it a great school because for me, um, I came from a very intense and very um, competitive high school and having um, this kind of understanding when I got to Bryn Mawr that like we were going to all kind of learn together how to be Bryn Mawr students really helped me get rid of some of the things I didn't really love about my high school, um, which was that competitiveness and that um, kind of tearing each other down kind of um, personality type and and figuring out kind of how to be more of the Bryn Mawr student of um, supporting each other and, and bringing each other up and really being competitive with yourself, but but being really understanding with your friends. And I think that was really important to me. And so kind of having that um, kind of playing field settled for everyone was was really great about Bryn Mawr. Yeah. Thanks. Um, and then what is your retention rate from first year to second year? Um, I do not have that specific um, number right now, but I, if you send me an email, I would be happy to follow up with you. And it could be on our website as well. Um, and then next question, will your testing requirement change next year in lieu of COVID-19? If so, how? So, um, if so, how? No, um, right now we are still test optional, if that's what you mean. Um, and we will not be changing. Um, and then another thing about test optional is if you feel that your ACT or SAT scores are not representative of your academic ability or um, what you think you'll be able to do in college, you do not have to submit those scores and they will not hinder your application whatsoever. Um, again, we do look at applications from a holistic manner. So if you don't submit those scores, um, you do not have to and they won't hinder your applications. I just wanted to reiterate that too. Yeah, I didn't submit mine. <laughs> and now she's a senior. <laughs> um, how do students usually describe the campus culture? Emma, how would you yeah. describe the campus culture? Um, I think we're all really curious. I think there's a big culture of just kind of wanting to learn a lot about everyone else around you. Um, I also tend to use the word diverse, but I think that also really depends on where you're coming from. For me, my hometown was not diverse at all. And so Bryn Mawr feels like a very diverse community to me. I think it really does depend. Um, but I do think there are really diverse perspectives. And I think that is a big value of the Bryn Mawr community. So my friend group is students who are from India and from Wisconsin and from Iowa and from Boston and from New York City and from places that are all over the world. And I think, um, that's like a really cool kind of melding of different places. Um, so I think that's like a really big part of the Bryn Mawr culture. Um, I think people are really academic and really intellectual and really care about school, um, but also really want to have breaks from it. I don't think that we're like all spending all of our time in the library. Um, and I think there's like a really nice balance between those. Um, although I will say now that I'm miles and miles away from <laughs> uh, Bryn Mawr, um, the things about the, the community that I really miss are the like hanging out late at night and studying together um, or calling it quits on a Saturday and just watching movies with friends and things like that. Um, so, yeah. And then um, what resources are on campus to support students who may experience mental health challenges while on campus? So we do have a campus health center and we actually are building a new um, health center um, but that can be a great resource for students who are experiencing mental health challenges. Um, as well as our Pinvy Center, um, they do host some um, events as well um, during like Mental Health Month, stuff like that. Um, mental Health Awareness Month, excuse me. Even during the pandemic, they've made an effort to do online group sessions um, for all of the class years for adjusting to the new normals. Um, we have group sessions in the counseling center normally, and so those have all continued. Um, so that's been a really great resource. And then also you get 10 free sessions at the Counseling Center every semester. And after those 10 free sessions, your Bryn Mawr insurance covers it in full. So it's really, really easy to get access to mental health stuff through Bryn Mawr, which is super, super helpful. Um, 
Uh, those seem to be all of our questions. So if anyone else has a, has a question, feel free to um, drop it below. And if not, we, on behalf of the Game Plan College team, thank you so much to both of you for sharing a little bit more about Bryn Mawr and what uh, the campus is like, what it has to offer. We look forward to continue to stay in touch with um, both of you. Stay safe and thank you again for doing this for us.